<clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you called. Who is speaking? The Apostle Paul. Who is he? He is the Apostle, preacher, teacher of the Gentiles. Repeat, he is the Apostle. Preacher, teacher of the Gentiles, in faith and verity, is the man that Christ from heaven has put in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, is our apostle. In Acts 9 15, Christ said, Go thy way to Ananias, who was a devout kingdom gospel believer, member of the Jerusalem church, a flock. For it is a short investment unto me to bear my name to the Gentiles, praise God, and kings and children of Israel. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. He doesn't consider himself a prisoner of Jesus Caesar, a prisoner of this present evil world, prisoner of Satan, prisoner of sin, the prisoner of the Lord. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The Lord said, you are my prison. But for a reason. To preach this glorious gospel of Christ. The glorious gospel of the cross. And that's why Paul writes in, in Romans 1.16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? For it is the power of God unto salvation. Did you understand? Did you get it? Did that pronounce properly? The power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. The Jew first and also to the Greek. So it's beseeching us because the Ephesians is the body of Christ and we are the body of Christ, the new creature. That's why Paul is our apostle. We don't follow Peter or James and John. We study them for our learning, but that's not our doctrine. Here is our doctrine. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Yeah, absolutely glorious. Even though, if we are honest, if we really speak the truth in honesty, if we don't pretend, this is not happening among us. Not even families where there are same believers. Sadly. They always, the enemy finds something to deserve and people fall for that. Anyway, with all loan, this is the commandment or the encouragement or exhortation, I would say, it's not a law because it's a, it's a prayer. You know, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. I think it takes time to understand what it means to work worthy of the vocation. Because what is vocation? That's the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It can't be higher than that. It's from the third heaven. The grace, the privilege that God gives, gives us. That we can belong to him. We can be his children. Children of light. Children of God. Adopted. God adopted us to himself by Jesus Christ. How important is our Lord Jesus Christ? Without him, nothing really happens. Without the mediator who shed his precious life, blood, the lifeline is his precious blood, on the cross of Calvary to pay the penalty of our sins, the Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and then he was buried, rose again. The third day, according to the scripture, for our justification, without him, nothing happens. God couldn't call, couldn't save us. Sorry, you know, tonight, I'm very... 7.33 p.m., 14 November 2024. God can do anything. That's why God himself and the person of Christ is the one who can save us. In his beloved son. By him, by the cross. Not at the cross, at the cross, not by the side. At the cross, Christ is dying, but then we learn from Paul, who was dying for our sins, including ours. 
Gentiles, that we have no covenants with, with God. They were stranger and aliens from the covenants, all the new of the Commonwealth of Israel, Ephesians 2 11, therefore remember, in time past. Gentiles in the flesh were called the, circumc the uncircumcision. From that, that is called the circumcision in the flesh made without hands. At that time, ye were without Christ, without God, with hope in the world. We were strangers and aliens from the covenants of the Commonwealth of Israel. We got something better, if I can say so. We have the grace of God, the gospel of grace. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Is that a question? Uh, you know, people think ec ecumenism is the way. No, no, no. I don't want to join and kind of sing Kumbaya with the Roman Catholic where they worship Mary or Joseph <laughs> or the little donkey or with those. That uh, they think that they they need to speak in tongues. No, I was one of them. I saw my error, <clears throat> my ignorance. I gave up that, praise God. And I say by grace, not because I gave up that. I gave up that after I believed the gospel of grace. You see what I mean? After I believed the gospel of grace, and then I start to understand those gifts signs, gifts, and so forth, they were only for a time, they ceased. And so promoting them now is heresy. Yeah, yeah. I was in that. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. The Spirit already united us. But we can endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, the bond of peace. Peace is what bond us together. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and you all. And please notice for people that probably think that this is water, there's no water here. Romans 6 tells you that, no, you're not. There's so many of us who were baptized into Jesus Christ, who were baptized into his death. We were baptized into Jesus Christ. And that's the baptism operated by the Holy Ghost of the Spirit. Not by man. Not a nice guy could pass through that dumps you into the water. It's nothing. You don't need that. We are not Israel. There is one body, one spirit. Even as you call in one of three, three, one, three times one, one Lord, four, one faith, five, one baptism, six, one God, seven, and Father of all, who is above all and true all and you all. Praise God. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. But unto one, every one of us is given grace, you see? Unto every one of us. Not an elite. Not an elite. Not a super holy, you know. Have you heard of this uh, sonship edification, you know? They go in this thing and they all oh, I'm suffering, you know. Must be greater. Read, 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 read Ephesians 4 7. But to every one of us is given grace. Is given grace. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. According to the measure of the gift, of the gift, of the gift of Christ. Those words are gold. But to every one of us is given grace according to the gift according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Before it says, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men, unto men. Verse 9, vision 4. 
Now that he ascended, what is it? But he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He did. He that descended is the same also. They ascended up far above all heavens. He might fail all things. What a great God. And he gave, oh no, no, no you, I want you to look this. He gave. He doesn't, he's not giving now. Some apostles. There are no more apostles. The last one is Paul. The last one is Paul. And some prophets. There are no more. There were at the beginning. When the Lord is laying the foundation of this spiritual building, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is the body of Christ. And some evangelists and some pastors and teachers he gave, he's not giving. So, but what are you doing? You're teaching, no? No. I'm not giving you new teaching that you didn't, you know, something new that God revealed to me. I'm just reading with you the scriptures and then the scripture teaches. Now we've got the Bible and the Holy Ghost. That's our teacher. We get to read and study. Objective, purpose for the perfecting of the saints, one. For the work of the ministry, two. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Pretty clear. Till, it is a till. We all come into in the unity of the faith. And this happens now that this scripture is complete thanks to the revelations that Christ gave to Paul. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Now, you individually, me individually, you have to read and study. But this unity of the faith is, is a done deal. It's for you to come to understand it. But it's already done. It's an operation of God and of the knowledge of the Son of God. <clears throat> and unto the knowledge of the Son of God. To know Him is the most important thing. You know. Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, and that's the body of Christ, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, this is a short study. This is so deep. God willing, next time. If there is a next time, God willing. I can dedicate more study to this, but for now, because tonight I want to come to another point. There is not so much time for me because it's quite plain here. Yeah? The we henceforth, which means from this moment on, be no more children. Okay, that's where I want to go. It's so nice to be children. I love children. I love children. It's so nice, you know, children. Yeah, but children are in a dangerous position because they're children. God desired that we come unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That we, we, that we come to understand it, because it's already done. But it's for us to understand, and by understanding, believing, and so we understand what God has done, and we comply because we say, yes, I understand. Yes, that's the way it is. Oh, praise the Lord. It's an operation of God. Then we henceforth be no more children. And now, now, we toss to and fro. And carried about with every wind of doctrine. Wow. Tossed to and fro. And carried about with every wind of doctrine. I don't know what it is, but those guys who don't write you divide, and I was one of them for 40 years, so I understand that. They always the end, the end, the end is here, the end is here. Now, big names ago on YouTube. They're all telling us as a question of days or maybe weeks and we get caught up because of what's happening in the United States. Like the United States, <laughs> the pride, the presumption, like the United States is 
you know, so much in the in the in the program of God. You know, you must be kidding. No, you're not kidding. I know. You you say so because you you read the you listen to the news on TV or the alternative news, and you think that uh, it's all about you know Trump, Netanyahu, Satanayu, whatever his name is. According to Paul, we are in the dispensation of grace of God. And Paul received this information from Christ. Ephesians chapter three says. Have you heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to your word? So Christ is given to Paul this doctrine, the revelation of the mystery, in this, the dispensation of the grace of God, which means God is dispensing grace. So if we are under grace and we're in the dispensation of grace, and the body of Christ is the revelation of the mystery, which was hidden God, but now revealed, eh? To Paul, for us, the body of Christ, and we, when we believe this glorious gospel of the cross, we become image of us, members in particular of the body of Christ. We need to understand that the prophetic program is, how would you say, is is on hold, is on hold. Practically, when Israel stumbled, diminished, and fell. With the stoning of Stephen and the calling of blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, and the, because Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost when was telling them the situation, Israel blasphemed the Holy Ghost. In the, in, the, in the Old Testament, they disobeyed the Father. They disobeyed, rejected, hated, and crucified the Son, and they blasphemed the Holy Ghost. The unpardonable sin in that dispensation, in Acts 7, when they stoned Stephen. Well, Israel is, is fallen. Israel is blind, is unsaved. With the fall of Israel, salvation came to the Gentiles. But this was the eternal purpose of God, to create this new creature, the body of Christ, where Gentiles and Jews, so all men and women, could become members of the new creature, the body of Christ, which is ended and destined to heavenly places to reign with Christ there forever. Praise the Lord. We don't come back here. <laughs> but those guys who don't write it, right? And they're looking at Israel and they think, oh, you know, are you blessing Israel? Uh, are you praying for Israel? Are you blessing? Are you sending money to Israel? Because, you know, bless Israel to be blessed. They bypass in the cross. Because all our blessings flow <laughs> from the operation of God. All our blessings and spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us, the body of Christ, with all spiritual blessings were in heavenly places were in heavenly places in Christ. Nothing to do with earthly material blessings. We are not in the prophetic program. We are not Israel going into the kingdom. It will be in the future. But now, there is no Israel God on this earth since Acts 9. 7, 8, 9. <laughs> Acts 28. Paul says, bye bye, I go to the Gentiles. You don't consider yourself worthy of the salvation of the Lord. I go to the Gentiles and they will hear it. So what is that? Oh, the modern state of Israel? It's just a nation. It's been created by the present evil powers. And you see what they're doing. <laughs> I mean, we become so callous, so indifferent, so cruel, so cold. Thousands of children get slaughtered daily. <laughs> but not only there, for what I heard. Plant family, what is it called in America? Worldwide, I mean, 60 million children are born there, 30 million. I mean, it's horrid, horrid, horrid. We're just a bunch of murderers. Cold blood, cold blooded, 
murderers all oh, in the name of patriotism with the flag under the flag or another flag everyone with a flag and we just go smash each other and who gets caught in this hecatomb in this drama drama the weak the feeble the innocent in a sense that they cannot defend themselves in any possible way children old people women and this is now you know and now, but now now you have this big top gun pastors they go on the internet and through the they do in the churches but then gets published through internet the end is near the rapture the rapture is coming those who believe the rapture those who don't they say the great tribulation is here some people say already we are already in the great tribulation Behold, I show you mystery. First Corinthians 15, 51. We shall not all sleep, we shall be changed. In a moment, at the twinkling of an eye, you know, in the twinkling of an eye. The next event is going to be big, and it's called the catching up of the body of Christ. People call it the rapture, okay, fine. And it's imminent in, the ter in, in terms that nothing it happens in this life, in this period, actually period is not, in this dispensation of grace is not a correct expression period. Sorry, I correct myself. In this dispensation of grace, nothing prophetic is happening. And nobody, and I repeat, nobody, and I repeat, nobody included, and first of all, me, nobody knows when, not if, there is no if it's going to happen, but we don't know when. And then I'm not talking about the second coming. We can know when the second coming comes. It's at the end of the Great Tribulation. And then the Great Tribulation cannot take place, cannot begin, cannot start as long as the body of Christ is here. So when is the body of Christ going to get caught up? He knows. He knows. He's the only one that knows. The all-knowing God. You don't know. I don't know. MacArthur doesn't know. The other guy, what's his name? Uh, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, I don't know these funny names of this big popular religion. The Pope doesn't know. They're all blind. They don't even understand that we're under dispensation of grace. They never preach it. They don't tell us that the only apostle that we follow is Paul. They don't tell us that the only gospel that saves us is the gospel of grace. They request no works in our part. It for sure doesn't require that we confess our sins, repenting and crying and getting water baptized to please what? Ourselves, our flesh, to show off, you know. And then say, I gave my life to Jesus. Really? You know that Jesus doesn't need your life. No, he doesn't. You need him. You, me, we need him. He can do whatever he's doing and he will do with or without us. God is God, man. You know, you got to understand this. He doesn't need anybody. It's a great blessing. It's a privilege. It's they give us grace and we are laboring for his glory. But if for his glory, they were laboring. Paul says, you know, the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. Jum, jum, jum. I've seen, I've seen several people. I cannot believe it. I've seen them in my eyes. They, they were Right, the writers, grace believers, all of a sudden going to into strange, weird doctrines, heresy, universalist, soul sleep, um, what's the other one? Predators, um, what's the other one? Sonship edification, uh, kenosis, which would be believing that Christ, when he was on earth, he didn't know the mystery. Christ was God in the flesh. 
because he knew it. Never told it, but oh, because they said the father is greater than I. You don't understand. They wish for be no more children. They wanna they wanna put themselves in the first line. Oh no. Listen to me. Why should I listen to you? Why you should listen to me? I'll give you the scripture. They will sport be no more children. God doesn't want us to be continue to be children and children and children, you know. Toss to and fro. Toss to and fro. This is really like I, when I see this, I say, like in Italy, say, Volta bandiera. You change the flag with the wind. It's like some people, they, they were in the Socialist Party and then also they go Democratic and they're from Democratic, Communist, from Communist, Fascist, and, Mas and Nazi. <laughs> what a joke. You can't trust my kind. You can't trust your flesh. I don't trust mine. But I want to trust and I want you to trust this word. These are the pure words of God. Because here, you got the word of truth. These are the words of the Lord. There will henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. But why? By the slight of man and cunning craftiness. Oh man, this is really devilish. The slight of man, they like thieves, they want to steal from you. Cunning craftiness, they want to reach. Because they want your money, they want to take your wallet. Why? Well, they can take money, I'm going to take it. Yeah, my wallet is full of paper, but no money. But there are those guys, you know, they come to church, you miss your brother. Because, you know, you pay tithes. We want your money, darling. I know we love you so much. Oh, we love you so much. I want to see your green bags, you know. Whereby they're lying where to deceive. That's what they're doing. They're like this. This makes you know lying wait like it is uh, wild animals. They just will lie. You know, leopard very clever moves very soft when you see the possible catch. You know, and then all of a sudden they jump. I've known many of those. When I was Pentecostal, ignorant, Pentecostal, blind as but I've known many of those. And I was ignorant to the point that, oh, praise the Lord for the man of God. Yeah, man of God. Which God? That's the point. The one with the low cast G. Because if you don't preach Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, you're not serving God. You're serving yourself and the enemy. Maybe you don't realize this. You, you, you believe in Jesus, you follow in Jesus. You know, you can't follow Jesus. Nobody can follow Jesus. It's in, it's in heaven. You follow Paul, teaching and doctrine to follow Christ. Oh, whereby the lying way to deceive. There we ask for being no more children. Toast to and fro. I said, but you're really insisting on this. Yeah, of course. I'm doing like a doom, doom, doom. Doom, doom, doom. Five times at least until it comes through the skull, to the mind, in the spirit. The winds for being no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. But the slight of men, in cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Don't they love this? So much deception. But speaking the truth in love, that's the love of the Spirit. Because if we speak the truth, which is Christ and his doctrine given to Paul, that's the love of God in, in action. May grow up into him. You see? That's how you grow. May grow up into him. That's where you grow in him. In all things, They grow up in him, into, into him, into him, into Christ. In all things, which is the head? That's Christ. Even Christ is the head of the body. Pick up a phone, give a call to pontiff, or send him uh, and tell him, you're not the head. 
you may be the boss of the Roman Catholic Church. No, no, not the church, the body of Christ. <laughs> and the local pastor of the denomination of choice. You are on a wrong path, man. If you don't preach Christ according to Revelation of the Mystery, you are in serious troubles. And I tell you this because I speak the truth in love. Because the truth needs to be spoken at all costs, but in love. The love of God. Not to hurt, but to help them to see the error and come out of it. And this pillow here that reflects, is this pillow? Yes, yeah, this pillow. This is, ah, oh, well. My system is a cheap one, you know, like a candle here. Okay, I think it's better now, because it likes, <laughs> I want to go to sleep. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, the whole body, the body of Christ, fitly joined together, fitly joined together. And compacted. What? How do we go choose these incredible words here? From whom the head, Christ, the whole body, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Hmm, this is said for and testify in the Lord. The yens forth. The sense forth is very important. It's a point of you start from the moment you are part of the new creature and you study these letters is an hands forth. Now there is something new you need to understand and work. Work out your own salvation, not for, for it. Henceforth, walk not as other Gentiles walk. The other Gentiles are the, the rest of the, those who are not saved. In the vanity of their mind. You can't beat this. You know why people don't like this book? Because it tells you the truth. And hurts your pride. My mind. I got a break, I got a great mind. I'm a scientist, you know. I work for NASA. We pretend that we are exploring the space, but you know, the Bible doesn't say that there is space. The Bible talks about firmament. <clears throat> the firmament. <laughs> it's not space. They didn't go nowhere, but they, you know, the vanity of their mind. Because they because they want the money, you know. Having the understanding darkened, 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 not darkened. My accent is horrible. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Yeah. Who, being past feeling, are giving themselves over to and to. This is tremendous, this verse. Who, being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Lasciviousness, uncleanness, greediness. Wow. They don't feel it anymore. That's, that's the case, you know. Having the understanding that being alienated from the life of God, through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. You go and preach this. See how many people are very interested. You got to preach me health, wealth, prosperity, abundant life here now. I remember like now this. Pastores. Pastores. Who cares about what's going to happen in heaven? We want the riches of God. The world now. I heard with my ears. We claim the promises now. They was claim, claim, claiming the promises given to Israel. So that's actually it's not claiming promises. This is stealing. Yeah, because those promises were given to Israel. 
and the covenant and the law. And by the way, conditional. For them to receive all this incredible blessing, they had to observe and obey and execute <clears throat> all the <clears throat> commandments and statutes of the law that God gave them and the covenant. And they fell miserably. We will do anything that our Lord says. That's what they said, you know, the people of Israel to Moses. Yeah, right. They practically shoot their own feet, you know. We're not able to serve God in the flesh. Impossible. The flesh profits nothing. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. The law is there to tell you what kind of big failure you are, but the grace comes to say, hey, God loves you. Well, me, the failure, yes. Because Christ died for ungodly sinners, enemies of God, children of wrath and disobedience, dead in trespasses and sin, to save them, to make of them members in particular, and of the body of Christ, flesh of his flesh, bones of his bone, bones, members one of another, all serving the head, Christ. Because we're going to go with him. Praise God. In every place. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, who being past feeling, <clears throat> have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work or uncleanness, with greediness, but ye have not so learned Christ. It so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Christ. But is he referring to the four Gospels? These are the words of Christ from heaven. That you put off concerning the former conversation of your man, which is corrupt. So, put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. It's not your dad. It's not your no, no. That's the man be according to Adam, according to the flesh. Which is corrupt. Put it off. According to the deceitful lust, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's why you get renewed in the spirit of your mind. And then you put on the new man. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. That's the high calling of Christ, of God in Christ Jesus. Wherefore, put in your ways, lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. You see this? Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. And so forth. I got to stop for tonight. Remember. Remember this. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Shut down the television and the alternative channels and start reading this book. I'm not talking like somebody knows all and somebody is uh, I'm already there. No, I'm still pressing on. But guess what? I found out that according to Colossians 2, and I'm complete in Christ, and you too. Christ has been made to us, in Corinthians he talks about that. Righteous in the redemption, sanctification, and wisdom. Christ is everything. We need to learn Christ and to know Him, to grow into Him. I speak the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Now, if you hear me for the first time or hear this message for the first time, I want to tell you how you can receive the free gift of eternal life. Cease from all ideas that you can do anything. Just believe that Christ is the Savior, not you. So, believe, receive in your heart by faith, without words. Don't say words, don't do scenography. 
just believe, receive how the Christ died for our sins, including yours, and that he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He saves you, and he seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise. It's an operation of God. You're not going to feel anything. That's so real because it's, it's written in the word of God. And these are pure words of God. When you believe the word of God, it works effectually in you to believe it. But you need to believe it. To believe it, you need to read it. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. God is love. And he commends his love towards us while we're yet sinners, without strength, weak. Christ died for us. Thank you, Almighty God. We bless you, Father. We thank you with all our heart for your mercy and grace and compassion and kindness and love. You're such a great God. We're still learning, Father. The most important thing, you saved us and you sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise. Thank you, Father. We thank you that Christ shed his precious blood to atone for our sins, Father. We thank you that now we can be in the fellowship of, of, of the Son of God. And that you reveal this glorious truth to people like us, Father. Really, <laughs> the best things of this world, you know. Help us, Father, to preach this gospel in a way that those out there still lost in Adam can receive this glorious gospel and be saved and see what belong to you for eternity. Because, my dear friend, once you believe and receive this gospel, it's forever. It saves you and seals you forever and ever. For eternity. Think about that. Amen. Grace and peace to all. Thank you for listening.